Hello, survivors. It's your host, Get Good Fox, and welcome to a State of Decay 2 mechanics breakdown video where I go into State of Decay 2 and do a little bit of research and interpret the information so that we can learn how the game works and perhaps adjust some of our strategies based on data. This episode is inspired by my continual frustration with heavy weapons. No matter which one I use, they always don't feel very good. They always feel bad. But feelings are not facts. And I said, you know what? Why don't we run a test and find out if there's a reason why I'm frustrated with them? So here is the deal. I wanted to know how much does lethality matter on a heavy weapon? So I took the Enigmatic Axe, an extremely high lethality heavy weapon, and compared Compared it to the Kanabo, which is a very, very low lethality weapon, and then I chose a character that didn't have powerhouse or anything that could affect the improved destructiveness of the weapon, just purely the weapon on its own, and then I painstakingly killed 100 zombies in mostly one-on-one -on -one combat and tallied up how many strokes of the weapon were necessary to kill them. So I killed 100 enemies with the Enigmatic Axe, 100 enemies with the Kanabo, then I made this lovely graph right here to record the results. Now, as you can see here, the Enigmatic Axe is represented in blue, and I did record the kills for that one first, and the Kanabo is recorded in red, which I recorded second, and the Enigmatic Axe started out just, bam, got like a ton of one-shot kills. It got like six of them in like the first one minute, and I was like, wow, is the Enigmatic Axe just going to run away like a crazy weapon? But no, then it quickly flattened out into basically my experience with heavy weapons. As you can see, there isn't a massive difference between one, two, three, and four shot kills. Yes, you're much less likely to get one shot kills, which makes sense, but you are kind of like similarly likely to get two shot kills, three shot kills, and four shot kills. And you would be rather unlikely if you had to take five hits to take something down. But that's exactly my experience with heavy weapons. So the Enigmatic Axe was exactly what I was complaining about. Like It's just all over the place. One minute you get a one shot kill, then you get a two shot, a four shot, a three shot. But here's what surprised me. The Conabo, 41 two shot kills. That means almost half of the time it was making two shot kills, which actually felt pretty good. I don't need one shot kills. I'm very happy with two shot kills. But here's the further deal. It's very similar on the three, four, and five shots between the two weapons. And if you add the numbers together, if you take like the one shot and two shot kills for both of them together, they almost are the same. Here's the way it works. The one-shot kills and the two-shot kills add up to 47% for the Enigmatic Axe. So let's just, you know, let's just round that to 50%. What that means is about half the time, the Enigmatic Axe will kill an enemy in up to two hits. Well, the same is true of the Kanabo. 41 plus 5 is 46%. So let's just round it up to 50%. So once again... 50% of the zombies you fight, you're going to kill in two hits. And then they are just as likely to require three, four, or five hits. It's a very curiously even distribution. But do you know what this means? It means if we trust the numbers, which like I, I'm going to. I mean, I recorded them myself. There's really no need to use the Enigmatic Axe because... Unlike the Kanabo, the Enigmatic Axe would be awful at killing Playguards, while the Kanabo would absolutely devastate Playguards. Because well, what it means is you're still going to get a kill in two hits half of the time, and you're still going to take three or more hits half of the time, regardless of which weapon you use. So while technically lethality did matter, it also kind of doesn't matter. So from now on... I'm not going to use high lethality heavy weapons anymore. I'm just going to stick with a Plague Heart Squisher, which is going to typically be a low lethality high impact weapon, and go from there. So, I'd like to know what you think. Does this change your mind about heavy weapons? Are you going to switch up your preferred heavy weapon after this? What is your experience with heavy weapons? Let me know down in the comment section. Remember, if you'd like to become a part of the Fox Republic and see more of my content, don't forget I also produce content on Twitch at Get Good Fox, and those VODs from the Twitch can be seen on YouTube at Get Good Fox VODs. You can also find me on TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, and I've got a Discord channel. 
love to meet you. Check the links in the description or in the pinned comment. But at any rate, I hope you enjoyed this rather curious breakdown on the heavy weapons. Like the video if you did. Subscribe for future Stage K2 content. But at the end of the day, of course, remember that you don't have to be good to get good.